Hi, everybody. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to read a novel with you guys, and uh, I settled on Operation Frog Effect, which is a book my daughter and I read last year and really enjoyed. Um, and it's a little bit unusual. It's told in eight different voices by eight kids in a class. And um, so the first um, person who uh, starts the story is named Blake. And you can see the way that it's set up. So Blake's name is there. And Blake actually tells his part of the story in graphic novel format. Each of the kids writes in their own way, in their own form. So he does um, graphic novels. And when it's Blake's turn, I'll put a picture of what he wrote and drew up on the screen so you can really see it. And so in this chapter one, he has lucky, unlucky, lucky, unlucky, as he heads, as Blake heads to school. I'm going to show you just the way that the pages look so you have a sense. I'm not going to show you every page, but before I started reading, I wanted you to see how it looks. So the um, person who's narrating, their name is up there. And then you can see this is Emily. She writes in letter form um, to Hope, which is the name of her journal. This is Kaylee. She writes to their teacher. Um, and other kids write in other forms. This is Sharon, who you'll hear in a minute. Sharon writes in poetry form, and then it's back to Blake. So anyway, all right, let me start reading. Um, Emily, status, smiley face. Dear Hope, Ms. Graham said we could give our journal a name so we feel like we're writing to a real person. I've always liked the name Hope. It sounds so optimistic. Okay, I just reread that and duh, of course Hope sounds optimistic. That's basically the definition, right? I'm feeling pretty hopeful about my first day of fifth grade. We're the kings and queens of White Oak Elementary. I've got both my besties in my class, Aviva, my number one, and Kaylee, close second. They came today with matching bracelets. I bet they'll surprise me with one too. They're sitting together in the back of the room. I wish they'd grabbed seats at my table, but oh well. Maybe they didn't see me up here when they came in. I can't believe Ms. Graham let us pick our own seats. She looks kind of young, maybe that's why. I hope she winds up being cool. She's gonna lock up the journals at the end of every day. My secrets will be safe with you, Hope, right? Love and luck, Emily. P.S. I think Blake is making frog noises. This does not surprise me. Kaylee. Dear Ms. Graham, I know you're reading this. I'm tired of pretending I don't know what adults are up to. I'm not being conceited or anything here, Ms. Graham, but I'm harder to fool than other kids. No offense, but if you tell the kids you're not reading the journals, you know half of them won't write at all, right? You'll wise up. And then some will be kiss-ups like Emily, for example. I can see her up front practically writing a novel. Aviva and I are outgrowing her. Last year, we only sat next to her at lunch to be nice. Blake Benson is the other one who drives me bananas. Somehow I got stuck with him and my table group, and all he's doing is drawing in his journal and making strange noises under his breath. I hate Blake Benson more than I hate knockoff jeans, and that says a lot. He's basically the cause of every problem. I'll write every day like you've asked us to, but I want you to know I'm not fooled. Come on, we're kids. We have zero privacy. And anything written at school and collected by a teacher is most certainly not private. P.S. I can't even see Blake's mouth moving. Maybe he'll be a ventriloquist someday. That boy needs a plan because he is not good at doing the school thing. Sharon. I'm going to write my journal in poems. Sometimes it's easier to speak the truth with a ballpoint pen than through my lips, probably because no one can interrupt. When I talk, I get interrupted, corrected, all the time. Mostly people don't want to hear the truth. Instead, they want some softened up, sugared over version of reality. Me, I like my truth naturally fresh and flavorful, without added sugar or preservatives, just like my food. We buy organic. The next chapter is Blake's, so you can see it there. His frog seems to escape. And at the bottom, you can see their teacher. Okay. Henry. Someday, I'll be a real movie writer-director, and I'll be so famous and rich that I'll pay someone to do the boring things like making my bed and setting the table. My movies will be comedies. None of that sappy tear-jerker junk for me. I think I'm pretty funny. Ma agrees. Not that I'm actually funny, but that I think I'm funny. She's always saying, you think you're so funny. 
and I say, true dat, like a gangsta, from a TV show, which makes her frown. If I'm going to be rich and famous, I've got to prepare. That's why Ba gave me his old cell phone. It's ancient, but it has service, sometimes, and takes videos and photos so I can practice making movies. I'll practice in my journal, too, by writing scenes instead of regular boring journal entries. Ms. Graham said we could write our journals any way we want, so here goes. The dollar signs below are for inspiration, and he has a lot of dollar signs. Scene, fifth grade classroom at White Oak Elementary School, 32 students sitting at desks in groups of four. Ms. Graham moves her hands when she talks like she's conducting an invisible orchestra. Ms. Graham, look around you. The seats you've chosen today will be yours for the whole year. Henry whispers to seat partner, rats should have sat closest to the door. Emily raises hand. Ms. Graham conducts. Get to know your table groups because you'll need to work cooperatively for each assignment. We'll be learning through hands-on group projects. Yes, Emily? Emily, since we didn't know about year-long table groups when we sat down, can we switch today before we get started? Ms. Graham, great question, and thank you for warming us up by being the first to raise your hand. But no, the table groups are set. I do this on purpose so that students have a chance to work through any peer problems that arise. Kaylee, raises hand, will we be graded individually or as a team? Ms. Graham, as a team. Kaylee, looks at our table group and sighs. Henry, under breath to Kaylee. Okay, this is how it'll be. You work and I'll supervise. Henry spies a frog leaping from Blake's pocket. It hops away from the table. Kaylee, eek, scrambles onto her chair and points. Ms. Graham, there's a frog by your foot. Ms. Graham, well, hello there. Surprisingly calm, picks up frog. He's injured. Kaylee, shrieking. Now there's a frog in your hand. Ms. Graham, so there is, smiles. First class vote of the year. What do you all propose we do with this frog? And then Henry includes brainstorming activity. What should we do with the frog? Remember, there's no such thing as a stupid idea. Idea, release it to the wild, number of votes, five. Keep it, number of votes, 21. Kiss it and see if it turns into a prince, one. Feed it to a bird, one. Hire the frog as a new principal, four. And the next person who writes is K. Dear frog, Yes, I'm writing to you. At this moment, you're the single most interesting thing in this class. Wait, is Emily crying? She keeps sniffling and poking her fingers at the corners of her eyes. She usually hooks up with Kaylee and Aviva for projects, but this time she's got me, Sharon, and that new girl, Cecilia, who started at White Oak last year. Cecilia smells like flowery girl shampoo. Maybe Emily's sorry she's stuck with us. I kind of want to reassure her that I'll be a good team member. Just because I finish my work super fast and teachers are always after me for reading under my desk, that doesn't mean I'm a slacker. Classwork is so easy that I can finish it all, get 100%, and still read half a novel during the school day. That's not being a slacker, that's being efficient. Same philosophy at home. I can read and mop at the same time. Don't bother asking me how. I refuse to reveal my secret method. We're a big reading family, maybe because both my parents are education professors at the university. They stagger their teaching schedules so that someone's always home for the four of us kids after school, and we all pitch in to help. Everyone in my house has got lots to say all the time. Sometimes the only way to get away from them is to hide in the coat closet with a flashlight and read. Reading is a good thing, right? But guess what I get in the most trouble for? Reading. Somehow no one thinks it's a good idea to read while walking the dog, taking out the trash, or mowing the lawn. Apparently, I got all the creative genes. P.S. Writing in private journals on shared desks is a recipe for disaster. People will peek. Not me, of course. Other people. Cecilia. Hola, Abuelita. It's the first day of school when my teacher held a frog in her hand. Goa. I thought that girl Kaylee was going to have a heart attack. We have an assignment to write every day in journals. I'll write to you, Abuelita. What better way to practice your English than to read my letters, right? I'll write in English, but I'll translate any words I don't think you know. When my journal is full, I'll mail it to you, and you'll know I'm missing you. Mommy misses you, too. Mexico is too far. Every night we dream of bringing you back here to stay with us. I remember being a little girl and snuggling up on Mommy's lap while you two talked and drank Café de Ola. Hungry, Mia? Mama would ask, and I'd shake my head, even though I was starving, because I was so cozy sitting with you both, and I didn't want her to move. Hopefully someday we'll live together again. 
Between my letters are phone calls that English class you're taking and watching television from the US. You're going to be practically fluent. Practica to practica to inglesi. Words to practice. I know you can do it. Journal equals el diario. Heart attack el infarto. Assignment la torea. Practice practica. Besos y abrazos Cecilia. Aviva. Date September 4th. Everyone is super excited about the idea of having a class frog. Ms. Graham let a few students take a break from journaling and convert a big plastic storage container into a frog habitat. They're gathering grass and poking holes in the lid. I'm an amphibian lover, so normally I'd be volunteering to help, but I can't shake a worry. So here's what happened. Kaylee decided we should wear our matching rainbow best friend bracelets today, and she saved me a place in class this morning. I tried to get Emily's attention and wave her over, but Henry snagged the desk right in front of me and Blake Benson slid into the seat in front of Kaylee. She hates, hates, hates Blake Benson. So I was sure she'd say she was saving that seat, but she didn't. I elbowed Kaylee and whispered, what about Emily? But she shrugged and said we had to stop babying Emily all the time. I real quick scribbled at Emily a note telling her not to stress that Blake would be moved up front within a week. I've been in Blake's class every year since second grade and teachers figure him out pretty fast. But then Ms. Graham said we'd be keeping the same seats and the same teams all year. So now I'm sitting here journaling and worrying about whether Emily is upset. I like writing. Because I'm quiet, people think I don't have much to say, but the opposite is true. I have so much to say. I probably have as much to say as Sharon and she's waving her hand to make a comment every five seconds. Kaylee always sighs super duper loud when Sharon's talking. I don't mind Sharon talking so much. She's not my friend or anything, but she makes me think. Okay, that's the end of chapter one, and I'll post chapter two soon. I hope you're enjoying the story. Bye.